Monday. It's Monday. Welcome to your morning mug. Today is Monday, the 27th of April, 2020. Mondays are hard. Even with peppy music, Mondays are hard to get up. Well, our mug today is actually inspired, well, sometimes I find ways to connect to the mug. Today, honestly, was a day that the mug inspired my thought process. So there's a dog chasing a school bus. Beautiful house on the hill. I wonder who lives there. One-room schoolhouse. The farm. This was another teacher gift from Aunt Patty. It came with a lamp. I still have the lamp too. Nice and big, large size. Um, and it actually also comes with one of those like warmers, you know, that you set the mug on. That's at school, but we'll be all right. So I started thinking about, um, you know, Monday, gotta have things ready for my students. Um, how can I do a better job of reaching out? How can I just do, you know, keep on keeping on, but what is something small that I can do better? And then I started thinking about how much I love my discipline. Social studies is awesome. It like, I don't know. I just, I love my discipline. And then I started thinking about all of the other disciplines and realizing they all relate to mine. Now I'm not saying social studies is better than all of these other disciplines because we're all important. But, so I'm like, okay, little challenge for myself. Can I pull the this day in histories and, and birthdays and connect to each of the departments? So let's see if I can do it. This day in history, starting with the English folks. This day in history, 1759, Mary Wollstonecraft is born. She was an English author. She was very much inspired by the French philosophes um, during the Enlightenment. And she wrote The Vindication on the Rights of Women. Um, so kind of one of those major documents if you talk about women's studies, social studies connection, of course. Uh, but Mary Wollstonecraft, also the mother of Mary Shelley, if anyone is a Frankenstein fan. Another English connection, this day, 1667, an impoverished John Milton sells the copyright of Paradise Lost for 10 pounds. Okay, 10 pounds sterling in 1667. Thank you to the British archives. I went and did a little bit of digging. Um, 10 pounds in 1667 today is about 1,100 pounds, 1,100 pounds. Um, and when you convert it to U.S. dollars, that's about 1400 So he sold um, Paradise Lost for $1,400. There's English. Um, let's go to the science people. Someone I didn't know about. Um, 1927, Sheila Scott is the first female to fly solo around the globe. Realizing that I, I talked about Charles Lindbergh, first, first man to fly solo. Um, but Sheila Scott in 1927, you go girl. Oh, she was born this day, 1927. Let me clarify. Big diff. So that's some science going on. Um, if you think about the physics of flying, yeah. But also those navigational charts and maps, social studies, they're going to be easy. Um, technology, technology. Happy birthday, Samuel Morris. <laughs> Uh, those dots and dashes, if anybody would like to record themselves doing a little Morse code and send it to me and I'll try to translate. Won't go very well, but it's worth a shot. Happy birthday, Samuel Morse. So that's a tech connection. Um, let's go to the art people. Art. We have some art connections. The day in history, 1840, the Palace of Westminster, um, the, a new section of it, Foundation being laid, cornerstone being laid by Sarah Barry, wife of architect Charles Barry. So if we think about art, this would also fall under tech and agriculture as well. But of course, the government connection when you think about the purpose of the Palace of Westminster. Mm. Happy birthday, Casey Kasem. I remember, you know, listening to, was it Top 40? What was the name of? We'd, we'd hear it after church on Sundays. 
Um, and also, don't forget about Casey Kasem and his connection to Scooby-Doo. Zach, that's for you. Okay. Again. Let's go to the health and PE connection for today. 1956, Rocky Marciano retires. The undefeated heavyweight. Rocky. Um, business. This one's a stretch. I'll give you that. I'm sure that there are other connections, but the one that stuck out to me this day, born 1948, Frank William Abagnale. So con man and uh, master manipulator, but then eventually got a great job with the, the government and, and the IRS working on fraudulent checks and such. Catch me if you can, starring Tom Hanks. So um, Frank William Abagnale does have one, if not more than one book. Um, that's on my list of, of things. Um, but as far as messing with checks, messing with banks, that's a business department thing. All right. Woo! Sorry. Um, let's go to agriculture. Please don't forget about the ag department. No farmers, no food. Period. So there. Um, this day in history, 1935, the United States Congress officially declared soil erosion as a net, quote, national menace. And as a result, the establishment of the Soil Conservation Service, advocating things like terrace farming, crop rotation, um, contour plowing, other technologies. Social studies connection to that? Hmm, terrace farming. Go take a look at what the Inca did before the Europeans came here. Terrace farming. Anyway, just an example. Um, world language, world language connection. This day, 1911. In India, passive resistance was put on hold when General J.C. Smuts, Smuts enters negotiations with Mahatma Gandhi, who was born Mohandas K. Gandhi. So in the country of India, there are dozens and I mean, I can't even say more than that, variations of language. The common language in India is English. So Gandhi was educated. He was a, a barrister, so a lawyer. Um, so English was that common language. And having the ability to be, oh, I think I erased it. A polyglot can make negotiations between different sides a little bit easier. Language is really, really important. And, oh, negotiation, working out some political differences. Social studies connection. <laughs> All right, let's, let's just do a quick check. We've done English, science, language, business, tech. Did I do art? Yes, art, ag, health and PE. So now we're down to the biggies that I have a lot for, math and music. Okay, Lisa, my math person, you're gonna have to help me. Tell me if this is right. So this day in history, 1837, Paul Albert Gordon, he was born in Germany, but at that point, the particular place where he was born is now in Poland. So, anyway, changing borders, social studies connection. Anyway, he found simpler proofs to prove that pi and E are transcendental. Transcendental. Our word of the day, friends, transcendental. Transcendental. Um, so transcendental relating to a non-physical realm could relate to a spiritual thing, but we're applying this to mathematics. Transcendental. Um, Paul Albert Gordon's work is based on previous work by Johann Heinrich Lambert in 1768, who conjectured um, about this, but he did prove that pi is an irrational number. Pi is irrational. All transcendental numbers are irrational, but not the other way around. I have so many notes, but I'm not sure if I'm right. Irrational numbers are not... Get rid of that. Transcendental numbers are numbers that are non-algebraic. So pi and e being non-algebraic. Can you... Can you fact check me on that? Because I want to make sure I'm right. Music. 
bunch of music as always. Happy birthday, uh, born this day, 1984, Patrick Stump of Fallout Boy. Um, the first performance of Handel's music for the Royal Fireworks. Gotta play some of that. So that's on my playlist. Um, this day, 1810, Fur Elise. Fur Elise by Beethoven was composed. Mom, I will never forget you learning to play Fur Elise. That's all I'm going to say about that. Okay. Um, also, happy birthday, Lizzo. Lizzo, born 1988. Happy birthday, girl. Oh, and here's a fun activity for today. Um, this day, 1891, Prokofiev finishes Peter and the Wolf. Okay, I remember listening to Peter and the Wolf when I was younger. I remember um, in music class, but I'm gonna put some fun things down in the, the comments for you. Listen to Peter and the Wolf. Think about the different instruments that are representing the different animals. And, 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 yes! like silk. This is the story of Peter and the wolf. There is a bird, light and delicate, with feathers like silk. <sighs> Narrated by Sean Connery. A dumb duck with a broad bill and large webbed feet. Broad bill. listen to it there is also one narrated by david bowie um so i'll put them in i'll make a special playlist for that just so you don't have to go searching through the now five hours of music on hedrick's morning mug so please make sure you check it out okay can we do a quick double check we did math we did music okay i am ready for the academic day here we go um, so until tomorrow, everybody behave, be good, be kind, please continue to recycle, wash your hands, pick up around the house just a little bit. Students, check your email, purge the ones you no longer need. All right. I will see you tomorrow. Uh -huh.